second camera, uninitialized background, set up those layers and cullings, render texture daddy-o. Let's get this resolution down. We got too many pixels. Let's do the raw image thing, same as before. Wow, that was easy. Why didn't I do this in the first place? Oh. Oh no. Gee, well it would be swell to keep going without any shaders, but unfortunately, if you want a better effect, we're gonna have to get technical. 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 Just kidding, we're gonna use Shader Graph. For the record, I'm currently doing my masters in computer science. I have done three specific courses about computer graphics. I've even hard-coded a WebGL model viewer, okay? I am a true code. But Shader Graph is really nice. It's so much better to see what you're doing rather than visualize the maths in your head. Okay, gonna explain this as best I can. But when a camera renders out a scene, it uses a depth buffer to figure out what can be seen and what's in the way. An object will only render onto a pixel when its depth value, that's how close it is to the camera, is larger than the one that's already on there. Therefore, to cut out the parts of our pixelated overlap, we need to know the depth of the scene and the depth of our pixelated objects. This example is using URP, but HDRP is possible, with some added caveats that I'll discuss later. I've got a standard unlit shader here. Getting the camera depth is actually pretty easy. There's already a node for it, but getting the depth for our render texture is another matter. See, apparently render textures do store depth, but I can't for the life of me figure out how to access this in Shader Graph. So instead, make another camera that renders to another render texture with the same resolution and its color format set to depth only. It'll store that info on the red channel. Then we can access the pixel depth with the second texture field. Use the subtract, seal, and clamp node so that it will be one if the camera depth is smaller and zero if it is larger. If statements don't belong in shaders! Plop that into our alpha channel and it works like a dream. No anti-aliasing, but we don't care about that. This is pixel town. If you want an outline effect, you're gonna have to work a bit harder. I use this neat sobel filter which creates edges using the depth texture we just made. We find the outline by sampling the depth in four different directions. Because of this, we can find the max depth in the pixelated scene and multiply this base Y outline by that value. That way, it won't be cut out by literally every object in the scene. That or you set it to the highest possible depth so that the outline is always rendered. That's a cool effect too. This effect is great and a lot easier to manage than the basic version, but it works via the resolution of the screen, not the object's sprite. So, the closer you are to the object, the less pixely it becomes. It's probably possible to scale this dynamically, but I'll leave you to that. I think it looks fine. Getting this to work in HDRP is interesting, because apparently render textures don't like having transparency in this version. You could use some weird color keying a shader effect to do this, but screw that. All you gotta do is search the web for hours until you find this one weird thread where a guy from Unity says you have to switch your color buffer format to this specific format, and it just works. Mwah. Though it's a little temperamental. I'm trying to get these videos shorter so they don't bore you to death, but leave a comment if you've got feedback or questions or whatever. Like and subscribe because the next video is going to melt your damn brains.